Yo, yo, whiskey with you guys. As you can see, we got a new cap today. Yes, sir. Beatstar sent me a merch package, man. Much love for that. Hey, so question of this week. If you could just automatically have the skill of just any producer in the world, who would it be? All right, so let's just go and hop in this video, man. <laughs> So the very first thing we had in here was just this bell melody. So super ambient and dreamy. A technique I like using for these melodies is taking a piano and layering it with a bell. So first off, I just kind of start with the piano. So yeah, let me play it and then I'll remake it. All right, so just dry, it sounds like this. So to make a melody like this, what I like doing is just kind of like putting down a root note. So let me just put like a chord right here and then move it over. And then we're just gonna invert this one right here. Move this one just a little bit off time. And then let's just add like a note on the clap. Extend that out. Like that we could just go one two three four five down but that's kind of cliche so let's just move this root note down right here and then this one right here like that and then with effects it sounds like this So uh, yeah, all right, so let me just put my original pattern back. All right, first effect was just an EQ. Then just another EQ to really do a ton of shaping here. Completely get rid of the low end. And then I added this Murder Melody plugin and I actually pitch it down like 13 semitones. And then this plugin right here, honestly, I've been using this a lot. It's a Juno 6 Chorus. It's a chorus plugin. It's a really unique one. It's not like the cheap chorus plugins that you see. It's like, it sounds really, really good. Just adds like a detune or something, like some waviness to it. You know what I mean? And then I added this reverb plugin. It's a plate reverb. It's like a really unique kind of reverb. And I really like it. It's just really smooth. And then I just added a portal. So the portal preset was a dark secret and grain synthesis. It's still the absolute king of portal banks. So I just kind of turned the mix level down a little bit. So it just kind of acted as like a halftime. There's like a tiny, tiny bit of body added to it. And then I just added another EQ to really just like dump any kind of low mids. And then I pitched it down one semitone with the wave sound shifter. So a trick that I do is I actually go in here and I pitch it up one semitone like that. Let's say I want it in the key of A, right? So I went in here and I pitched it up one semitone like this and then opened up a sound shifter and actually pitch it down. And the reason I do that is because sound shifter introduces like some artifacts that a lot of people think aren't good. But for me, I actually really liked it. And it's some kind of like weird stereo separation kind of messes with your stereo field randomly. I think that's a cool effect, honestly. So I just kind of actually did that on purpose. And then just a free limiter to turn it up. Then what I did was I essentially just copied this pattern by like control C and then like control V and then I just pitch it down one octave. This is where like a lot of the actual sound is. You can also see it has the exact same effects as a piano too. So, but yeah, you're gonna wanna find a bell with like a really plucky attack. That was from the Nebula one shot pack by Daniel Taylor and Prod2. So uh, yeah, with effects, it sounds like this. So when you combine it with a piano now, it sounds really, really good. So 
what I did after that was I just rendered it out. And yeah, that'll give you this right here. And the reason I do that is to add more effects onto it later and also to save CPU. So yeah, I actually rendered this to this second track right here and I actually added more effects to it. So the effects I added were another portal. I used this sediment grain from the mechanisms two pack by Pilgrim. This one's also really, really good for like completely changing the sound. It's like some crazy alien effect type thing. And then I just added an effect rack. First thing I had on here was a crystallizer and it just kind of makes it reverse and stuff. So if I turn it up all the way, so let me just turn this down to about like, I don't know, maybe 5%. And then I added a pan man just to kind of make it pan left and right in my headset. And then an echo boy just to add like a delay. And then just a final EQ to remove any kind of lower frequencies that kind of make it sound muddy. And uh, yeah, that's it for the bell. So really at this point, what I do is I go find accents and stuff. Normally what I do is I find them in a one shot kit, but yeah, I got mine from Splice. Finding vocals on Splice is kind of hard sometimes. There should be a little button in the top corner that says see the new Splice. So make sure to click that. This version is a lot easier to find stuff in. I just search like vocals. Instrument, I change that to vocals of course. And then I change it to minor. And then personally, I like to sort by most popular. And you think that you get something like overused or whatever, but honestly, man, I don't care if it's overused. I just want to make good music. So like, you know what I mean? I don't want to click through a bunch of trash for like the next hour. Also on the master right here, you can see I actually put a sound shifter to actually pitch it down three semitones just to kind of make it sound a little bit more, I don't know, put together and deep. And then I just added a bass. And the sub is the Abyss sub from my drum kit, ATL Culture Volume 2. It's got all my favorite basses, all the ones I use. So after that, I kind of went hunting and spliced more, and I found some other vocals, two different vocal samples I just kind of put together. First one was this one. So there's some things I didn't like about it. Like, I don't, I don't like this. I don't know what that is right here. What I did was I found another one, which was this one right here. So what I did was I just combined them into this right here. And yeah, you can see I did some automation down here because these are both mixed completely different. So this one has way less reverb and just like nothing on it. So what I did was I actually made two automation clips. One, because this sample right here was a little bit more wide. So I just kind of like moved the stereo separation in right here, created an automation clip for it. And yeah, that's what that does. So now I had all the reverb on this one right here. So I'm not gonna remove the reverb because I like it. I need to add a lot to this side and just not this side. Since these are added to the same track, what I did was I just added a lustrous plates and then made an automation clip right here. And then after that, it sounds like this. So yeah, then after that, I just added this accent right here. And then with effects, it blends in really well. So just, of course, an EQ, that Juno chorus again. And that was basically just to kind of accommodate the bell. Pitch your accent to your root note. And then I just added a perk loop right here. And that just loops. And then I just added an EQ on. And that was a perk loop from the Amber Analog Lab Bank by Base One. So 
So uh, yeah, man, if you got something from this video, please let me know in the comments. And uh, yeah, till next time.